and we're back. Okay, so maybe we'll talk about this particular painting or I'll just get my editor to help me put it up here so you can see what we're talking about. I think one of the reasons why people just have like a, such a unappreciation maybe or like a visceral reaction to art is that um, they don't spend enough time looking at it. They don't spend enough time like sitting and trying to engage with the painting. So if you look at this piece here, the longer you stare at it, the more you'll notice things like perhaps the way that the painting forces you to engage with it looking clockwise. Are you looking clockwise at the painting where your eyes are moving from one color to the next to the other? That's purposeful um, because he really understood color and composition and what will attract your eye. And then on closer inspection, spending a little bit more time, you'll notice that the white of the painting are different shades. It's not all completely white. And that also adds a little bit of depth to the painting in an otherwise very flat space. If you're looking at abstract art and you're thinking, I don't get it, um, just try to think of a few ways that the painting is forcing you to engage with it. Are you looking at it a certain way? Is there colors that stand out? Again, emotions, I mean, even if you're confused, that's definitely an emotion and you wanna figure out why. Why are you feeling that way? Or why is it making you angry? Um, because it's dialogue and it's a dialogue between you and perhaps an already long gone artist. And that's interesting to me. It's kind of like um, reading a book or something and reading a book I always say, or reading any article, any any piece of text, is like the only way we can like telepathically communicate because this idea that I have in my head that I then put onto a painting or have written down, you get to now see and interact with. And I mean, until we figure out how to telecommunicate or until technology instantly sends our thoughts and emotions to other people, that's what we have. So. Spend a little bit more time looking at a piece and think like, why do I feel this way? Is it intentional? Probably. I mean, they spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. And we're back. We're gonna take off this masking tape to see how straight these gray lines turned out. And uh, hopefully they turned out because that's a big element of the painting. But taking masking tape off is my favorite part of stuff like this. It's like freaking Christmas. <gasps> I kind of mucked up here. It's okay. It's okay, cat. It's okay. We can recover. Ooh, it's okay. I'm gonna start adding my colors in. This is house paint, remember? So I gotta shake it up before I open it. And I did map this out beforehand so I know what colors I wanted to do and where and like where I wanted to place them. These lines aren't perfect, but it's okay. I think the whole point of it as a perfectionist, I'm trying to tell my inner, inner self being like, who's freaking out right now about how these lines aren't straight and clean. But the whole point of this video is to see like, how hard is it to paint a mondrian ass piece? And it's fucking hard. He has the cleanest lines and they're straight and the guy never even used ruler. So already respect on that part. So I'm not gonna, so I'm gonna go into this painting with blue right here and I'm not gonna mask anything off because uh, I think I got it from here, <laughs> but we'll see. This color of blue is so cute. It's kind of like a robin's egg color, right? I totally blurred because I went down, but. So I'm gonna let this part dry and then go over it with another coat of paint um, just to get the color a lot more even, but I'll move on to my other little colorful squares here. And I did map this out on my iPad, so I'm just gonna follow that. Cute, how cute is this color? It's called Roman Ornament. I like it. So I'm gonna paint that yellow up there. Oh my gosh. 
It's called Stout Beer, and it's, um, it's supposed to be the red, but I think it has more of an orange. Okay, I'm gonna go back into that blue, just, I'm gonna go back into this blue just to put another um, layer on, so it just gets rid of the patchy bits there. And uh, yeah, I think the yellow might need it too. And then I also have a cream color just to break up the white bits, because in Mondrian's paintings, remember, they weren't all, okay. So as I'm painting this, I guess I could keep talking about some of Mondrian's other works and how it then transitioned from this to foregoing the black lines altogether. And so he moved to New York after he kind of got well known for this in Europe, but he moved to New York and fell in love with jazz music. And so these later pieces kind of were an evolution of his compositions with red, yellow, his classic compositions of red, yellow, and blue. If you'll see this picture that I'll have up, but I probably have one in this book as well, just to give me some context. This picture now, you can see that it's a lot busier and um, he completely got rid of the black lines and the way that I think believe that he was going with with this was if you were to look at New York City from an aerial view and this, these were kind of the roads with the cars and how if you think of Europe from being very it was busy in its own way too but New York is a concrete jungle even then he was trying to capture the motion of the city itself and with jazz music there's a lot of um, chaotic rhythm but also had some sort of uh, jazz music. It seems, also jazz music seems random, but it's not. It's like these melodies go together. Do you know what I mean? This is supposed to be an aerial view of New York City and he completely foregoes the black line for something like these. And I think he got that movement really well with this picture. So I also wanted to break up these blank white um, squares with something that was off-white and this paint is called coconut milk and I can't think of a better name for it because oh you can't see that in camera but it is co it is like coconut milk also I don't know where it cut off but I'm basically adding this cream coconut color to some of the white because if you'll notice in his paintings not all of his white squares were completely white they had a little bit of variation in uh, shade Okay, I, I mucked up right here because I went, I wasn't paying attention. But I'm just gonna fill it in again. And I wish I brought a smaller brush so I can come in and clean it. Okay, guys, I think that wraps it up for my piece today in the studio. I personally will be touching up these points at home in my own time because there's some little things that are just bothering me about it. Hi, I'm back. Um, I had to take my um, Mondrian-esque painting and fix it at home because as, if you can remember, of course you would remember, it was only a second ago. But um, the lines were really not clean. My paint had stepped through the tape just because it was really liquidy and I didn't adhere the tape down hard enough. Um, so I just went in and fixed that at home and took a little bit more time with it. That was really important. Again, it was a lot harder than I realized to make one of these. Um, so what I did to clean this guy up was take my tape um, and put it back on my lines and I went in with, I don't know what these are called. I don't know what these are called. But anyways, you can probably even take a credit card and just like really um, punch in on the tape to make sure that it's very um, it makes a really good it makes really great contact with the canvas and uh, the nice thing about working with canvas is that you can really beat it up with a lot of paint and it'll handle it you can put layers on layers of paint so that's just what I did until I came out nice and clean like it is now um, the other thing that you may have noticed as well from my um, studio painting was that this yellow was looking super streaky and there's just something about like the consistency of the paint that it just didn't like being handled with a brush like a bristle brush and um yeah so to get around that to make it more even and flat i just went in with like a small roller it is house paint so that's probably why as well um 
and I just went in and did a couple of layers and now it's really flat and I really like how it turned out like this. And we're back. Do I think that a child could make this? Yeah, I think a child could make this if they were really, really freaking talented. It took a lot of energy to get my lines straight and I don't even think that my lines are very clean, but um, I think I got the essence of what I was trying to do and the whole point of this video was to see how hard is it to try to replicate a Mondrian-esque style painting and it's hard and the way that I think is very different to the way his paintings are so precise. I recommend doing this if you were one of the people that voted in my poll that a child could do this. I mean, I think you should try it because it's really challenging. If this video was interesting to you, it would really help me out if you gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. You can find me on Instagram at Hey It's Friday Junior and on TikTok at Hey It's Friday Junior and here on YouTube. All right, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Meow, 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 meow.